This is the next lesson in this uh, racing lawnmower quick start guide. Uh, this is just a continuation of the powertrain or the drivetrain as I call it. But I just wanted to take a minute and show you. Uh, this is pretty much done now. So what I've got is this double pulley setup again like I showed you in the other lesson. Um, I've got the spring tensioner and I just made this mount that way I'm not sure how much spring pressure I'm going to need if I need to adjust it one way or the other so I just put this little mount in so I can drill a few holes if I need to and move it forward or back if I need to change the spring out so and the way this works we got this set up again you can see the same setup with the pulley and the riser block that block of wood that's just getting it up in the air just checking alignment up and down and then I've got my vice grips holding it. it. Gives me an idea of how it's going to sit. So when I run this, I'm going to push the clutch in right here. That should be enough right there as far as belt slack for the clutch to work. I should, I should be able to get the belt to slip and get the machine to stop driving or trying to drive. So one of the things I want to mention right here while I've got it is these belt guides. There's this one here that I tacked in place. This one here I ground a notch so that it wouldn't move. What that does is, you know, you're going to have enough slack in the belt that it can slip off of the pulley when it's loose, when you've got the clutch engaged. So, so what we do is we use these little belt guides to kind of keep it from falling down off. Uh, you'll see that quite frequently. Someone will push the clutch too far and releases the belt too much and it just falls off. The other thing that we do or I will do is I'll put some belt guides back here. Uh, some of our racers are just drilling a hole through and putting a bolt right there. You want to leave enough room that the belt won't come out naturally but you can stretch it without having to get the wrenches out and slip a new belt on. What I'll probably do is take some of the stock guides bend them a little bit because I'm using this quill which has got that big aluminum base and I don't want to weaken that anymore on the top side what I'll probably do is I'll drill a hole out here on the edge of the quill and it'll just bend in and up and that way if I need to I can grab it real quick swing it out of the way slip the belt on and then push it back in so and I'll put one on each side I'll put one here and I'll put one there and I'm not sure on the back I might I don't know yet we'll just see how it works so so that's the drive the clutch mechanism there then what I wanted to show with the brake I got the brake set up on this one as well so this is the brake mechanism now because I lowered the transmission or the transaxle so low this was the stock arm or actuator and that didn't work out it was actually getting in the way it was hitting right down here and I had to flip it around backwards which wouldn't have made it work right so so what I did is I actually took one off of one of these MTD transaxles there um, like I mentioned before when we went over transaxles these really aren't that good a lot of a lot of different reasons for racing that they just can't handle it um, they're not strong the bigger thing is they're forward and backward and you have to spin them just so fast to get them to even move so so the thing is, but the arm, I was looking at the arm, and the arm doesn't have all of these funny bends in it. And it's still got the same brake lever spot right there where it moves your pins in and out. And so I took it, as you can see, and the way it worked is it had a hook that hooked in this hole right here. And all I did was took a piece of flat bar, bent it, and drilled a hole so you can see that slide in like that. And then I just welded that on. Now, one of the things that I like to do is I like to have double springs, as you can see. This is the stock spring that comes from the factory. That's, that's designed for the machine to be moving about 3 miles an hour around the yard, not 25 miles an hour around a track. So what I like to do is I usually like to add a helper spring, and that's all that is. And what I will do to keep the pedal from being sloppy this way forward is I'll probably drill another hole right here and put a light little spring just to keep it tight so the pedal's not bouncing around all out of control so and the way this works is same thing I got my lever moves that way 
and as you look you can see when I push it back it just pushes it back now with these brakes they don't have to go very far before they're applied so I mean there's not a lot of travel there and then we use the spring to ease it you know take up some of the foot pressure right there so that's all that is it's a simple braking mechanism I found that the brake shoes the stock brake shoes they don't last very long especially if you have a driver that likes to ride on the brake um, what I'll do is I'll pick up some four-wheeler brakes that have got some better materials in them and I can just take a hacksaw and I'll cut them and uh, file and fit them so I'll have better shoes I found that that works it's much better they hold up better you can usually make it through a season if you have someone who doesn't really ride the brake while it's engaged so anyway I think that's about it so we got our clutch going we've got our braking mechanism going we've got our double pedal set up as you can see right there both of our little cantilevers on the pedals and so what I'll do before when it's all finished you know I will add some washers to take some of this slop up on the arms I'll do the same here take some of this slop up there I'll put washers I'll probably put uh, cotter pins in instead of these little snap rings these little these little snap keys or whatever they're called they work real well when you're pulling them apart putting them on pulling them apart putting them on for the build part they work well but I'll use cotter pins and then as I mentioned you know if I use two on this one three it looks like it's gonna be then I'll throw three extra ones in my race box so if I have to do something with it at the track I'll have fresh clean cotter pin that's just something you want to get into especially if you do any traveling as you're gone there's nothing more frustrating than trying to find some little kind of specialty item at a hardware store in some place that you don't know while the race is going on so so anyway so I think that's it uh, we've done our steering so what we're gonna do next is I'm going to show you how we shim the bearings on the front wheels because I've got to do that before I flip this over and I'll put the front end and the steering and all that on and we'll flip it over and put the wheels on and I'll show you uh, what we do is a shim that goes inside between the bearings so that you don't you can't crush or push the bearings too far into the rim um, I've had that happen so so we'll go over that and I think we're about ready to flip this over and work on the top side so we'll, we'll do this top clutch for the next belt and the idler pulley and then other than that I think we're about done and we'll go through putting the motor on and I'll touch a little bit on the the wiring um, the things that I like to do with the wiring so so anyway until then I'll talk to you later